tell me how you spent the close season. What's been happening for Ian in the close season? Well, it's been a strange one uh, because of um, the following season and, and, and seeing that one out. So it was about talking to players mostly. Um, we've restructured the whole whole squad. Uh, and we've managed to get eight in so far. Uh, still looking, still looking to add. So it's been a big turnover of players and squad-wise. Um, so it's been a really bu busy off-season, really, and trying to get the right people and talk to a load of players. And it's been hard, but enjoyable. So tell me your thoughts about, in detail, a bit more about the past 16 months. What was it like with the promotion when you came up? How did you find the beginning of it? And it's been quite a tumultuous time for a club that's gone through a lot of changes as it is without COVID and then all of that. Tell me how it's been for you in your role as a manager. Well, it's been quite rapid. It really has. I mean, it's been uh, the club has grown and, and got to a level that's probably we didn't expect really, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, when I first came back a couple of years ago um, and took over again, I knew coming back we had the nucleus of a really good squad, uh, and I knew they were just under underperforming a little bit, and we had to we had to get them on get them on the right track. And then it was all about creating momentum, and uh, we quickly got that. Uh, and um, Kettering was out of sight at the time in in, in the Southern Prem, but we uh, we caught Stourbridge in the last day, and, and we, we got into the, into the playoffs. And then of course there was a super playoff and. So we had an extra game, but uh, the group really responded to f for us coming in and uh, uh, got a promotion that I think we thoroughly deserved and this club thoroughly deserved. Um, and then going into the Conference North, we knew it was going to be hard. And uh, I'll never forget that first away game at Guiseley. We, we went there and uh, uh, we got beat severely that day, you know. And, and it was like, whoa, this is a different kettle for fish, this one. So, But again, the players responded. Uh, and we kept the same squad as well, so we gave them a chance. Uh, and again, momentum carried on and carried on. And then we found ourselves really, really adapting really, very quickly. Uh, and then things really progressed from there. Well, you know, we had York here in front of 4,000 fans. It was fantastic, fantastic for the football club. And then, obviously, with the pandemic coming in, it got cut short. And then we had an anxious wait. Um, uh, I think the, the National League was waiting to see what the EFL were doing at the time and what where, where, they, were going, where they were going to fall. And then points per game fell in place and got another promotion where we didn't really think we, we was going to get one. We was looking at to, to really uh, stabilise ourselves in that north. But to go through back-to-back -back promotions that quickly, it was, it was a hell of a jump. So uh, that was hard. And then uh, we had to wait a, a long period of time before it was confirmed. So we, I remember we was out here, met up with all the players again, lifted a trophy in front of no one, you know, which was, which was a massive shame. Uh, um, and then to go into the league like we did last year, um, Going, going for it, coming back, and then going out, promising the government, promising grants, and you know, and then to getting that taken away from it was, it was a really tough time. It really was. And at the time, I was I was very much against continuing. I really was. But Steve, the owner, wanted to carry on. He, he, he thought it was, he, you know, we could handle it with loans and, and whatever. And we we find ourselves where we are now, and it was. Uh, it was a hard time last year because obviously having the whole squad furloughed and and then going out with like a begging bowl and asking players to play for nothing really and I I really really am grateful for the players that played for us uh, because they they just came and, and and played just for the opportunity of playing for Kings Lynn in the National League and uh, and we find ourselves six day uh, twelve days into a six week program at the moment so we're. We're full time. With the club has moved on leaps and bounds uh, from day one when we first came into where it is now. It's unrecognisable. Playing at the end of last season, once you knew there was going to be no relegation, how did that work for you and the players as far as motivation was concerned? It was hard because we were just ticking off games. Uh, 
But what I must say, I must credit the players that they they perform magnificently because. We didn't want to go away from the principles of where we play and, and, and the philosophy that I want to play. And the players that we did buy, uh, we bought in, really did perform. They really did. They, they, they bought into what we tried to play. And full credit to them, we, we went out there and we, we didn't win many games, but we were in games. Uh, and the performances were good, were good. You know, considering we were a scratch team. Uh, did we take liberties? Yes, we probably did because there was no repercussions at the end of it. But uh, it was it was hard to motivate them. It really was. But we had players that were trying to gain a contract at, at this football club, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm forever in their debt for what they did for us. You talked about um, bringing in players at the end of last season. Obviously, new players coming in this season. There's been people like Michael Gash that has moved on. How are you balancing that and keeping what you said about the momentum going and keeping the the core feel of what Kings Lynn is about? Yeah, well, it's it's been looking at the philosophy we play and how we play, uh, and then getting players to come in to suit that style. They must be able to handle the ball. Uh, they must buy into what we're trying to do here. Uh, the players that we have bought in have all been at, at this level or higher. Uh, so they know about us, they've done their research as well because players do these days, they just don't dive into anything blindly. Uh, and they want, to be pl- they want to be playing in a certain style that we're going to try and play again. But I really am happy at the moment with the squad we've, we've, we've built here. It's exciting times I think because we'll learn from our sm- mistakes what we made last year and we, I hold my hands up, I, lo- I made a lot of mistakes last year. Uh, and we'll try and rectify them this year and put out a side that's really competitive in this league. How are they gelling? Do you foresee some extras coming in between now and the beginning of the season? The players we've brought in have have settled really quickly, really quickly. It uh, it helps us being full-time because it's not like on a Tuesday night and a Thursday night and they meet up for two hours and that's it. They're in constantly every day and they're, they're gelling really well as a group. And it won't be a big squad, it'll be a, t- uh, a small squad, but really close-knit. And the group is a good group, really is group. Uh, they've worked very, very hard. We've put a lot of uh, endurance into them, uh, leg-wise. And we've played three games in that. I mean, the first two games we always knew was going to be about containing and staying in games because of the level of opponent we was playing. Uh, and then last night at Gorston, it was about us controlling the ball and controlling and, and putting our little patterns in, into place. And uh, we've done that well. We've done that well. So was, there's some good signs there. They've taken on, they've taken on board what we're looking for very, very quickly. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but it's all it's, it's everything's building to the 21st of August when we have South End here, and uh, that's what we're building to. We've we've picked up a couple of little knocks. Uh, Ethan Coleman has uh, had an impact knock on his uh, calf. Dan Bauer, he's got a tight hamstring. Cameron King's a little bit fatigued in there, but that comes with the territory. It's, it's, it's early t- days of pre-season. Bodies are getting used to the full-time climate now. So it's uh, no, we're, we're we're happy. We're in a happy place at the moment. I like. I still like to bring two more, and that would be us finished. Um, but two more, two more bodies will give us good competition. You mentioned Cameron King. His fitness, some of the people I've spoken to seem to think that may be a slight issue because he had a few knocks last season and stuff like that. Is that something you're monitoring carefully? Do you see that as a potential problem? No, we hope, we hope not. He's, in a, he's very wary of his body and he doesn't want to go down the same line as we did, he did last year. So we're very mindful of that and we speak to him constantly on a daily uh, Carol deals with him on there. Uh, he's had to sit out this last game last night because of uh, fatigue, uh, but he's back in with us to, again today. So we're, we're hopeful, but we just got we got to look after him. We have got to take care of him uh, because he, he's an exceptional talent. He really is, and he's a big part of our plans this year. Uh, and if we can get him at a, a good level of fitness, it, he'd be he'd be massive for us. Uh, the players have already recognised that because of the, the weeks he's had with us. Uh, they know he's, he's, he's a quality player and we're lucky enough to have him here. we just got to take care of him and monitor him daily uh, and make sure he's, he's ready 
to deliver everything out on the pitch. Obviously, we're hoping to open up with fans back in on a full-time, unlimited basis, I believe, from the South End game. So what difference is it going to make to have the walks sort of rocking and playing again as far as the team's concerned? It's, it's, it's the, the massive to us and, and, and what we've achieved because they've, they've been the driving force behind the 11 that goes out there. Um, they make really good noise. They really do. It's, it's the, they're close onto the pitch as well. So, um, and for the last two, three years, they've been the main influence of where we've got because they've drove the team deep into games as well uh, and carried us through. Uh, and it's a special place to play. It really is. When when, when this place is is full, the noise that it generates uh, and the players feed off that. They feed off the supporters. And we're close to the supporters as well because you know we, we try and make it a close community football club, um, and it's 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 going to be massive to us this year when, when when the fans are back in. What would you like to see from the club, the town in general, that will give you the impetus and momentum as you described it over the next two five years, maybe to take you into the league two? Well, I'm, I know Steve's ambitious. Um, and he wants to try and take it as far as he can. There were times last year that I've probably thought we, we might have hit the ceiling uh, because every club has a ceiling, ceiling point where you think, well, where can we go from here? Uh, but I must say, by going full time and, and getting the squad that we've got together, it's, I think we can go another one, I really do. It's going to take time, it really is. It's going to, we're going to have to be patient with it because this is only... We had a free hit of it last year, uh, so we've dip, dipped our toe in it. Uh, this year, we've got to be more competitive uh, and go out onto the pitch and give teams a game. Uh, with the squad we've, we've put together, I think we'll be that way. And then keep building, keep building, keep building foundations below us as well, with the academy and the younger players. Uh, and then this, this can be a sustainable football club, it really can be in future. Uh, and. Um, and grow and grow and grow and uh, with the town behind us uh, and, and the community getting behind it as well and local businesses helping as well as much as we can. I know they do in abundance uh, and they're probably fed up with Steve keep phoning them as much as he does but it's, we're a small community here, small town but it's, 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 it's one that's got a lot of potential. You mentioned the academy, is there any signs of any players coming through, have you got your eye on anybody? We've got two or three training with us and they've had a little go at the pre-season games as well we dip them in and out uh, but this year as well uh, we'll be going over and I'll be keeping a closer eye last year we never did because of what happened here and, and around the world but uh, this year we'll be closely monitored we'll have more of a connection with the academy and what, what's going on over there um, but we really have to get a, a major link and cross that bridge and, and try and get players to come out of there that's closer to the first team than it has been in years. So uh, it's something that's really uh, on the agenda this year that we, we take care and have a look and make sure that we know what's coming out of the academy. It's late May, you're coming towards the end of this season. What's success look like to you in Carver House? Success will be, for me, probably not for the chairman, but for me it will be anywhere in that mid-table and we, we, we are a lot more competitive than we were last year. Uh, uh, we go into games giving teams a game. Uh, the, big te the big teams know they come to us and they're going to be in a really competitive game. Uh, we have a couple of really solid results uh, and we hold our own. And, and we've taken another step from last year and it's all about taking steps, it really is. We've got to be patient and we've got to know our level where, we are, where we're at. Uh, but like I said before, I'm really pleased with what we've got here at the moment. Um, it's, it excites me to work with them every day. They're giving everything they have. All the players do. They're, like I said, we're, we're getting that close, close knit group together again. And I've said it before. If you get momentum going, it can it can carry you through. And it's important that. We start to win games and we're hard to beat and we don't give away soft goals. Uh, all that stuff that happened last year, we improve on. Uh, 
and we become better and better as, 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 as the time goes on. And uh, if we improve, well, I know we'll improve on last year because of what happened. Uh, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be a challenge for most teams this year. Ian, thank you very much.